I don't even know if I should do my regular intro. I think you should, or something like it. Um, welcome to the Massage Hot Podcast. My name is Nick Paterka, a licensed massage therapist in Portland, Oregon. This is a special episode with my first return guest ever, <laughs> Blanca, fellow Hi. massage therapist here. Yep. Just uh, also in Portland, Oregon, but for obvious reasons, we are not in the same location. Um, so first off, how are you? Yeah, I'm, you know, a little bit of everything every day is what it feels yeah. like. <laughs> yeah, Thanks. yeah, most, mostly good. Yeah, um, I know, like myself, you have uh, children um, some some of the time and yeah. it presents its own challenges. Mm-hmm. Um, we don't really need to go there because that's a whole nother topic. <laughs> right. <laughs> We're kind of here to talk about massage therapy. And I, I was telling you that I have this um this notion just to uh to occupy some of my own time and to just connect with people and to learn things. So I thought I would um find a massage therapist in every mm-hmm. state and I would have one of these types of conversations with them. Yep. Now, for in your case, I hope that we can have ongoing conversations. Sure. Um, because we sort of know each other already, and mm-hmm. you have ties to the your teacher at the East West, and ties to the community, and just like yeah, we'll kind of keep up on on Oregon and Portland, as it were. Yep. From from my uh, my state level project, I was hoping okay. you uh, you could um, just comment on being and becoming a massage therapist in this fine state oh yeah yeah um well i think you know i'll just reiterate what some people might not know which is that to be a licensed massage therapist anywhere in the united states of america um the licensing requirements vary from state to state right and so um you really want to look at the state you want to be practicing in so the information i have is for oregon um keep that in mind it'll be different in different states yeah, and that's one, um, so, like, that's one of the points I'm super curious about. Like, yeah. how different are they everywhere? That's what, when I, when I Quite different. I mean, there are even a few states left that don't have any licensing requirement, yeah. Yeah. which is pretty wild. Um, Oregon has pretty high ones. Um, there's two states with higher requirements than us, and one is New York, and I can't remember off the top of my head the other one right now. Yeah, and neighbors um, to the north, Canada has very high requirement. Yeah, Canada has at least an associate's degree, if not a bachelor's degree, yeah. available in massage therapy. So go Canada. Yeah. I would like to see that here. That's, that, they have like, a na- that's a national standard, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I think, yeah. Um, okay, so in the state of Oregon, you have to apply for a license, but in order to get to the point where you have to apply to a li- for a license, there are several steps um, before you do that. Um, the main one being your education. So Oregon has a minimum requirement of 625 hours Hmm. of education at an accredited school. So there are a couple of different accreditation agencies. The largest one is called CompTA. Um, So you want to look for a school that's accredited with CompTA or generally with the Department of Education. Um, East West definitely fulfills that. I believe Oregon School of Massage does as well. Um, And I just saw that um, the folks behind the Naga Center of Thai Massage are partnering with Lane County Community College or Lane Community College and launching a new accredited program there mm-hmm. with a Thai focus. So that's mm-hmm. cool. Yeah. But one of the many reasons it's important that you choose an accredited school is that <clears throat> within that 625 hours, there's a very particular breakdown of the curriculum and content. Um, and people don't need to worry about that so much as long as they're picking an accredited school. But just to give you a general idea, in Oregon, it's like 200 hours of your program has to be um, health and science related, mm-hmm. and 300 hours has to be massage, massage application, and clinic related. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you don't want to spend money on an education <laughs> that, that isn't going to yeah. apply. Right. Yeah, you have to do your homework on that. I mean, people sometimes do find themselves in a position, unfortunately, where they've spent some money and went to a school, and then it's time to apply. Yeah. Mm-hmm. and they get bad news so first step you choose an accredited school you graduate from that program and there's one more step one more major step between graduation and applying um, and that's passing the licensing exam Mm -hmm. 
And the licensing, licensing exam is called the MBLEX, which is an acronym, M-B-L-E-X. That's not a national exam, but interestingly enough, most states now accept it. Hmm. And I, w I won't bore you too much with the reason for that, but there's a federation of state massage therapy boards that came together and created that exam. So that's a nice thing. Yeah. Um, so if you end up wanting to move to a different state, um, you know, a lot of times they'll ask you, are you licensed somewhere? And did you pass that MBLEX exam? Yeah. And they're in Oregon, got rid of the practical. They did a couple of years ago. Well, oh, man, that was, that was so stressful. <laughs> I know. Yeah, every once one of the last groups that did it. I don't know, but like. I, I, every once in a while, if I have a group, um, who are who are going through the program and studying with me, and if they're they're really stressing out about the MBLEX, which is, you know, it's not nothing. It's a serious exam, and you take yeah. it on a computer in a testing facility. But sometimes I'll have a group that's really stressed out, and I finally just tell them my story, which sounds like, in my day we walked yeah. uphill both <laughs> ways to our exam <laughs> in the snow, and oh, it was a practical. <laughs> did <laughs> I know? That was such a, that was the weirdest well, the morning weirdest of my thing life. About it for me was like, like in retrospect, it wasn't even, it was the stress of it that was so hard. I remember you know, asking like, like one of the things was like, what are three things you would consider for someone with a sprained ankle? And I just froze you blanked. for like a yeah, you blanked. 60 seconds. Like totally asinine. <laughs> well, and that was one of the, I mean, that was such a long conversation about the practical. And one of the things we kind of arrived at was like, is this testing your ability as a great massage therapist or is it literally testing your ability to function under high pressure? Right. Yeah. So I do I need that? Yeah, I know. It's yeah. so that's gone. So yay. Anybody yeah. applying in Oregon, you don't have to worry with practical. So you want to get a good education in an accredited school that has a minimum of 625 hours. Um, but many just schools to, go above and beyond. East yeah, West, what, that's what East, East West is an 800 hour program. Yeah. Yep. And so our graduates, when they graduate, they have the basic, all the basics covered, and then they have studied two electives of choice. So a little bit more advanced training um, in different modalities of their choosing, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Then you want to take the MBLEX, um, pass that, and then you apply for licensure, um, which is a bit of a process, but not that bad. Um, it's all done online through the Oregon Board of Massage Therapy. Um, and there are a couple little steps in there, like you wanna have CPR, which your school, excuse me, which your school will normally help you have taken and cover that. Um, and then there's something called a jurisprudence exam, which means a law exam, but that's open book. Um, and I think like an email link is sent to you for that. Uh, there's a background check, a pretty extensive background check. Um, <clears throat> and once all that goes through, you get your license granted. Cool. Yeah, and then in the state by, of Oregon, we. Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say by by doing those things, if you end up you do want to move to another state, you've probably set yourself up in a better. Mm. That's one of the reasons I chose Oregon. So yeah. I'm from New York originally, which has a thousand hour minimum. Mm. Um, and I was either going to go to school there or out here. Um, but I wanted a school with pretty strict requirements so that should I want to travel and teach or offer massage, it would be a little bit easier. Um, and that's really played out to be true. Um, I talked to New York a couple years ago. Um, and while I didn't fully pursue my license there, they were willing to take into account all of my years of clinical experience. Mm. So when I talked to the state of New York's massage board, they were saying to me, it, would look, it was unlikely I would have to go back to school because I had 800 hours plus many hundreds of hours right. of clinical application. So and it was great. education, presumably. I mean, mm -hmm. I guess that's one, one to, to maintain your license, like a lot of other professions, you need to take a certain number of- Right. Continuing education. Continuing education yeah. credits. Yeah. Right, so it, and that again, varies by state. So the current laws in the state of Oregon is that a massage therapist is required to renew their license every two years and to have completed 25 hours of continuing education credit in that two-year cycle. Yeah. Cool. And then there's other, I mean, there's, there's a lot of rules. I don't, I don't know how deep you want to dive in it, but so that's like not, broad strokes. Not deep. My, my other question is, what would be, what, what are your thoughts about a national standard? 
you think that's overdue? Do you think it's too hard? Is it unrealistic? I think it's really overdue. I think that the Federation of State Massage Therapy Boards, <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot of acronyms. Um, that's the agency that created the MBLEX. Okay. Um, I think that's a step in the right direction. Um, I would love to see a national national license, um, yeah. for sure. Or, or at the very least, a strong, powerful network of reciprocity between states that have high standards. Mm. Um, but yeah, we're not there yet. Yeah, especially since, I, is it just like a couple states that have no standard, no requirement, or is it like no. a, is it like more than ten? I, I think there's two. Well, if I get Max, to interview someone in every state, I'm going to find out. Yeah, you're going to find out. I know, yeah. I'm pretty sure Kansas is one that okay. doesn't have any requirement. And do, mm, there's a, a, a correlation there between that and sex trafficking, unfortunately. Mm. Yeah. That so is. you can Google that and okay. get a little research. Yeah. And then, um, was oh, so the other thing about just Oregon. So like, now obviously we're in Portland, which is its own sort of like wellness mm -hmm. bubble. Mm -hmm. From your perspective as an Oregon licensed massage therapist, what do you find it to be like to work here? Well, that's a great question. Is that too high level. Do of you mean do you mean pre-pandemic? Yes, I yeah, I would mean in a normal time. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think it's awesome. Um, I also used to work as the alumni services coordinator for East West College, mm. meaning that I had a lot of connection with the employers in the community. Um, and was tracking and managing employment levels for our graduates. Um, and about three years ago was the first time in the 10 years I had been doing that, that we saw the industry shift to a position where there were more jobs than licensed massage therapists, mm. which is pretty cool. Um, and I feel like some of the positive changes we've been seeing in the industry in Portland um, are a direct side effect of that shift. Mm. Um, so there's a lot of opportunity and I might have mentioned this before and this is a kind of a fun part about having a second conversation with you <laughs> <laughs> um, but AMTA the American Massage Therapy Association yeah. right yeah I know I feel like we should have like a little like every time I list an acronym it should come up on the screen and stay there um, the stay day. there <laughs> yeah um, they do an industry report a national industry report I think every two years which is fascinating um, and the last couple of years, um, the percentage of American adults who have had a massage in the last year is hovering at 19 to 20% nationally. So I look at that and I see 80% available market. Right. Opportunity. Now I'm pretty that, sure if we were to do that study in Portland, we'd have a higher percentage than right. 20%. Is, is there statistics on how many people have never received body work? In their life. Oh gosh, that's a good question. I I I don't recall seeing that in that report. Because that's one of my things. It's like that's why I'm I, I think we talked about it. How I want to produce this long form content of therapists doing like full sessions. You know, like yeah, unedited. And um, obviously I can't produce any right now. Though I I did have one filmed that I just edited. And I'm about to release. Yeah. That's that's kind of exciting. Awesome. Um, but one of the things is that getting those out there so that people who've never had it or who've only had yep. one and dismissed it or for some reason then right. like, and see what more work is like and and kind of destigmatizing yeah, absolutely just like just like oh that's what it's like i could do that you know like yep. we can show them what a thai massage looks like in a swedish mm -hmm. traditional deep tissue sports like show them all these things and they yep. go, oh, that's the one that looks like it would work for me Totally. Yeah. It's a great idea. I'm really excited to find someone who practices Indian rope massage. What is that? I have no idea. Oh. <laughs> I just it's a thing. Oh. <laughs> like, I got my first I got my first sarga massage a couple months ago. Have you heard about that? Does that stand for something now too? Probably, but I don't know. <laughs> I don't know that one. But no, it was incredible. Good. It was done on a mat on the floor and okay. the therapist has like these not ropes but like these fabric things that they hold onto and they lean oh. against and they massage you with your with their feet oh so is it kind of like ashiatsu but thai sort of it's exactly it's like a fusion of the two but without the ashi or the ashiatsu bars right um 
just has this like cool stretchy fabric that goes like under the massage surface and they just kind of like hook it around their shoulders and lean back into it it's cool yeah. i know so many yeah. so many different ways to do it well, um, well, thank you for participating in my mission to talk to someone sure. from every state about massage therapy. And um, yeah, do you, online, you can tell me if you know anyone who would talk to me from another state, because I'm, I'm guessing you know people. I know a few. <laughs> this might be how I pull this off. I just, yeah. uh, I'd be like, t give me, give me people that in other states that will talk to me. Yeah, we have a network. Yeah, I mean, because I, I can reach out randomly on Instagram, but like, you know. No, and no, I for sure have some people, yeah. at least in Montana and New York, also New Mexico. Anyway, yeah, I've got people. I'll oh, good. Go. I'll get them on the list. I have someone lined up for Wisconsin. Um, cool. So I guess if you're feeling deep breath ready for it. Yeah, let's there's talk about going it. going on right now. Um, uh, I guess, should we say the date? Or is that yeah, going to be? Well, it'll be published, but as we record, it's Sunday, April 5th. 2020. 2020. What a year. Some stuff's been happening. Yeah. Um, so uh, I'm going to start with having you define this, this little mention that you gave to me in our um, Marco Polo conversation. Mm -hmm. um, collective trauma. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> um. Before we speak to that, I feel like I do want to say something a little bit broader. Please. Um, I think it's really important for people to know or acknowledge or, or hear reflected that however they're feeling or responding to this situation right now is completely legitimate and the way that they should be doing it. Mm -hmm. um, I've definitely been seeing a lot of things on Instagram and around social media like if you don't come out of this time more developed as a human being, if you haven't done all these things and you didn't do it right. Um, yeah, and no I, right. yeah. I, I'm really not okay with that. I, I, I definitely don't want people to be taking any part of our conversation away with like a sense of shame, you know? Definitely. Um, yeah. So yeah. However people, however LMTs are responding to this current situation is legitimate and and great and if there's anything that we talk about today that resonates with them i would say pick that up and take it with you and carry it with you yeah that's and beautiful if it, said yeah and if, if it doesn't resonate just leave it yeah i'll yeah. say for, for my, my for my own self i the first week or so i was a little i was hard on myself i was like mm -hmm. oh this is such a great opportunity to get this done and that done and i went through days of of not a lot getting done and I got to the point yeah. where I was just like, you know what? It's okay. If yeah, exactly. If for whatever reason I need to watch um five episodes of The Simpsons and only five? <laughs> That's just like in one chunk. That's five later. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, that was just part of it. That was just five, and, then, and then check it. one email and then call it good. Yeah. So yeah. I, do, I do, you know, I'm, I'm working on things like creating this project, for example, is something that I feel like I can do and I'll, I'll come away. Yeah. But yeah, I feel like whatever people are doing and whatever they need to do should be uh, yeah. acceptable. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. So yeah, let's talk about this because uh, something that we like to talk about in our field is the effect of trauma on the nervous system and the body or just the human creature in general. And um, one of my favorite definitions of trauma is basically the concept of something negative happening. So that's the first part of it. Something negative happening to you that you can't escape. Yeah. Right? I mean, that's a little bit reductive, but... Um, I think it's pretty clear that those are like two of the the big pillars of trauma. And so, yeah, I mean, we are essentially experiencing a collective trauma right now. Yeah. And it's uh, affecting people in all sorts of ways. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, when I think about what my clients might be going through and how it's going to like manifest and, and hold in their body and yeah the things we all may hold on to and i don't know if you got a chance to see the episode with megan grace 
I did, and I, I worked with her. Yeah. Yep. And she talks about the maliversary and how, how like tr traumatic events in our lives can, can resurface a year from now. So I've been yeah. thinking like, oh, how am I experiencing this in my own body? And kind of setting a little silent reminder to go off a year from now to be like, totally to check in with that kind of thing. I mean, I think it's an inter interesting thing too about us like kind of capturing this moment and having this conversation too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was going to, to transition into a question of, well, it's related to that. In your, in your clinical practice, have you seen this, this sort of manifestation of the body hanging on to, to things that may have been a long time ago? And can you speak to any yeah. cases like that? I see it. I see it all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what it will often look like clinically um, is I'll start working on someone and They'll come in with, you know, a standard list of complaints about what's happening. You know, maybe my, I have chronic headaches and my shoulders are tight or this or that. Um, and sometimes I'll be working on someone and they will start crying. Mm. Um, and they'll start saying things like, I, I'm, I don't understand why this is happening to me right now. Um, and some people kind of will just like verbally process and some people don't. Um, but when they do verbally process and listen, we have a scope of practice. I'm not a mental health practitioner. Of course. Yeah. I'm not counseling them, mm -hmm. but I will listen obviously if people are speaking while I'm massaging them and sometimes I'll process and, and go, Oh my gosh, I, I just didn't realize like, um, I don't want to get too specific, but sometimes I'll say something like, I'm just realizing that like I lost this family member last year. Mm. and my body is like holding a bunch of grief about it and all of a sudden I'm thinking about them while you're working on me so yeah it'll look like that um sometimes I have clients who um are very connected to it um and they'll know exactly what it is when it comes up and it's not always crying you know sometimes it's uh uncontrollable laughter that's a mm. fun one yeah. right there's I've all sorts come of across ways. more laughter than tears yeah mm. yeah I would say for me it's like 60 40 yeah. tears and laughter i don't know maybe i should look at the music i'm playing maybe it's too sad <laughs> <laughs> it's all duran duran <laughs> oh that'd be awesome <laughs> um yeah so i mean it, it moves out of the body in different ways um and then also i don't know about you but um i can often feel energetic shifts when i'm working what about you i am just starting to tune in my therapeutic skew, skills to the energy side. I mean, yeah. I, I feel like it was kind of becoming more and more of an interest to me and in things in that realm. Um, mm -hmm. Definitely, you know, I'm definitely a believer in, in that. And I think I may take some continuing education specifically around energy. Mm -hmm. I've been reading this book about um, healing sounds and like crystal mm -hmm. bowls and mm -hmm. oh, like yeah. singing bowls. And I, it's, I, I guess just because I like music and sound so much, I feel like I might just, yeah. when, this, when this is all over and I can shop for something like that again. And mm -hmm. I don't know, I just like the idea of the, the sound. I don't know if have you ever played with the, 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 the sounds and the bowls and the- not, not myself as a practitioner, but I've been doing yoga for like 22 years now. Yeah. Um, and that was my first introduction to that kind of sound healing. Um, and it's undeniably powerful. It's cool yeah. stuff. Yeah. Um, also, if, if, oh. sorry. Yeah. The, well, the I was just going to say too, if you're interested in that, you should read some of the research um, that Oliver Sacks did. Okay. He was I, a neurologist. I think he's referenced in the book, actually. Oh, probably. Yeah. yeah. Um, he's written. He wrote several books um, in the course of his career. Uh, one in particular, I'm thinking of, is called Musicology. Okay. Um, and it's really about the neurological response in our brains to music. Oh, neat. Yeah, it's a great yeah. book. Yeah, I love that stuff. And I feel like the, the physical bowls, like, because I can play a Spotify playlist of Tibetan singing it's bowls, different. but not the same. No, you can feel, like, have yeah. you ever been to a live show? You oh, go to a live yeah. show, yeah, well, and you can different. feel the music pass through your body. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's like that. It needs to actually move the space around you. Yeah. I think. I mean, I don't know. I don't have any training in it, but that's just my yeah. experience of receiving it. Yeah. And the book talks about how, you know, all of our 
cells have a their own vibrational frequency and yep. they make what book are you referencing called healing sounds by mitchell gainer okay i gotta check that out oh i'm sorry sounds of healing oh nice there it is it was cool. right to me nice yeah i'll check that out yeah and i randomly like my i have a sister who several months back she started like her and her husband and her kids started like bidding on abandoned storage facilities. Oh, I've heard about you ever that. Seen people do that. Like, or they get them basically yeah. unseen. Yeah. She has so many interesting treasures, but this was just like one of the books. And oh, I was, really? I was like, that's right that's on my cool. alley. Yeah. Yeah. It was meant to be yours. Yeah, right? So, okay. So keeping our caveat in mind that yep. whatever we need to do is okay. Exactly. Um, what are you doing? I guess, I guess you can go, you know, personally day to day, or I guess for this conversation, it makes more sense to say like, as a licensed massage therapist, business owner, are you taking any action? Are you doing anything proactive? Or are you just kind of, are you still in a, taking a breath moment? Where are you at? Well, let's see. How many days are we into this quarantine in Oregon? Do you know? Um, I kind of stopped counting. I mean, does it feel like or <laughs> three weeks? Yeah. Four weeks? I don't know. It, honestly, like half the time, I don't know what day it is. Yeah. 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 Um, two things. Um, I'm making lists of things that I want to accomplish with the resource of time that I have, mm -hmm. and I'm also giving myself a lot of grace for not necessarily being able to get to that as quickly as I would like. Yeah. I mean, okay, I'm just, I'm just gonna be like really vulnerable here because that's kind of my style. Anybody who's studied with me knows. Um, I'm in a fair amount of shock. Yeah. I was actually on the verge of opening my first clinic, <laughs> right? With, before with employees and the whole yeah. thing. Yeah. yeah. Three treatment rooms and classroom space. Oh, wow. And um, years of preparation to do that, that. And it just, best case scenario, the pause button has been hit on it. Right. Um, and I have other friends who are business owners who expanded their businesses right before this happened. So yeah. there's that part of it that's shocking to me. There's also the part of it, which um, I don't know if we talk about enough, which is that um, working as an LMT also benefits us. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Our body. I know, I know more than one practitioner who says like it practicing itself is meditative. Yep. Absolutely. And Absolutely. We learn so much about grounding and centering. So one of the things I really love about doing body work is <clears throat> when I walk into my office to see my clients, I literally visualize that I take all of my problems or excitements, anything having to do with me, and I put it in a jar and I put it on a shelf and I say to it, like, I'll see you soon, but that's where you go for right now. And then I spend, you know, five or six hours very focused on other people. Mm -hmm. And when I come out of that, it always feels like meditation. Mm -hmm. So not having that, um, has been challenging for sure. Also teaching, you know, um, East West just announced that they're pausing their program until at least June. Okay. So no spring so, term. No spring term. Yeah. Uh, and I love teaching. So um, I'm doing some online content, um, little seminars and things like that. But I'm also trying to be sensitive to the fact that maybe what we need the most right now is connection mm -hmm. and that maybe our brains aren't <laughs> wide open to learning right now. Yeah. Um, so just trying to navigate that and really get a feel for it. Um, and also learning how to, how to teach people in this format, which is it's very different. Yeah. Yeah. Especially with a, obviously a hands-on field. I, yeah, there's, there's someone that I, a, a trusted person who lives in my building who has sort of become part of my quarantine cohort. Who's gonna, <laughs> who's gonna I like that term <laughs> quarantine cohort who, who is going to to pop down here and um, let me record some things that I think might help people. I'm just gonna talk about how to like, if you have kids or a, a sibling or a significant other with you, like 
maybe these are some things you could try to that's great to work on them and you know um, yeah I mean, you know, as well as I do as a massage therapist, people are always like, can you teach my whatever to give me better back rubs? And I'm like, yeah. And I have seen some people, I think Megan might be one of those people. I've seen some LMTs who are starting to offer content like that. And that's really cool. I did, I did try out, I have just, just with my friends. um, But like you mentioned that Marco Polo app that we've Mm -hmm. been chatting on, which is really cool. Um, They're not sponsoring this talk. I just have to that. Um, but I had a Neither friend was, who, uh, East West also doesn't sponsor any of our yeah, No, no one sponsors it. <laughs> Nick and I bought our own tea. Thank you yeah. very much. Um, <laughs> but I had a friend who I was chatting with and she was like, oh my gosh, my neck is hurting so bad. I slept on it weird. And I was like, will you let me use you as a guinea pig and let's spend 20 minutes on, on a video chat and let's see if I can help you. And I taught her the concept of stretching but not to the end point Mm. um and i taught her some like cervical rotation issue stuff um how to open up the first two ribs and the basics of myofascial release in Mm. about 20 minutes oh cool so yeah i there are lots of opportunities there um and i might start expanding in that direction um but right now my clinical practice is closed my teaching is closed mm-hmm. um my kids are no longer in school yep all sounds very familiar yeah it's a new normal yeah for now yeah yeah would do you do, do you normally ever work on your kids mm. do they get all the a- time i worked on my oldest daughter last night she gets um allergies that bring a bunch of compression into her sinuses and then she gets ear pain yeah. so she had a hot bath last night and some gua sha i do like scraping uh-huh. yeah. um in the chinese tradition um and then some general massage so yeah my kids are well versed in the benefits of massage therapy and were you did you benefit from that in the same way that you would in your normal working life or is it different because you're it's It's different different. it's totally different with my kids yeah Yeah, it's different than holding that completely neutral therapeutic container right with somebody that you know very little about Mm -hmm. yeah it's different that does for me anyway um for myself i'm sort of like i set up some goals about I'm going to make content and release stuff and, yep. it, um, you know, from a business, yeah, I, I was still like very much in a growth phase. I was still trying yeah. to build and establish a clientele. Um, from like the business side, I've seen a lot of people do this and I'm still struggling with it. You can give me an opinion. Like it feels weird to ask anybody for money right now in, in terms of like, I was thinking about pre-selling gift certificate pack or, you know, like packages Mm -hmm. where the per Mm -hmm. session discount is less, but they would prepay and it might insulate me from some of this downturn or at the very least, like, let me know that when this is over, I have an expectation of, you know, people that are going to be coming through the door. Um, So I haven't quite. What feels hard about that? I don't know. It just feels like it's hard for everybody. Like, but then again, there's a lot of people that are still working and they do still have their full income. And so. And you have to remember that there are people out there with economic resources that would like to know what to do with it. Right. Yeah. I think that's maybe more of a personal block. And I, I think I will put that out at least to my sort of meager um, client list that I have so far. Well, I was just going to say that's part of it too, is like you're still very much in that growth phase, you know, yeah. um, where it's like I and some other business owners have had our clients, some clients reach out to say, what can we do? Mm-hmm. Um, we're thinking about you right now and we're worried um, about your business. So I've definitely seen some people, you know, pre-selling some stuff. Um, interestingly enough, I feel like I've seen this conversation starting faster um, in the yoga community um, because some of the yoga studios in Portland are offering completely free content on Instagram live and some are offering content, um, for a fee. Mm -hmm. And so I've been watching the conversation between those practitioners where they're like, Hey, what are we doing for like offering all of it for free? Um, so yeah. And also, I mean, this, this is, I'm, I'm glad you asked this. This is a tough topic because it really pushes on that thing that I talked with you about before where there's this like unspoken 
belief that if you're going to be a healer or somebody who helps people, um, you shouldn't necessarily want money to mm -hmm. do that. And now it's like, well, okay, add to that. We're now in a time of a pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's sticky. I don't have the right answer for it. I'm not pre-selling anything at the moment, yeah. um, but I know business owners who are. Yeah. Yeah. And again, wh whatever any of us decide to do is like. Exactly. Totally okay. Yep. Um, what do you think about this as a concept? This is not related to what we were talking about. What if, could, do you think like an audio description of a bodywork session would be therapeutic for people? You know what I mean? Like put mm. the headphones in and it's someone's voice being like, okay, close your eyes. Imagine someone's applying pressure to your, you know what I mean? Like. It's almost like a guided meditation. Yeah. Yeah, but like mm. they're, they're asked to sort of imagine that they're receiving pressure. I mean, I guess it would depend on how much weed they smoked. <laughs> hey, that's legal in Oregon. Yeah, for those of true. you watching from other places. True. Yeah. In fact, it's considered an essential business. Um, no, I mean, I don't know. That could be really cool. I mean, yeah. I personally listen to a lot of guided meditations, um, yeah. and I would kind of put it in that category. I'd be interested yeah. to try it. It'd be, I just, yeah, I feel like it's a little bit of imposter syndrome popping up. Like, who am I well, to guided body work meditation? But here's, but here is one of the silver linings to what's going on. And maybe I don't want to use the term silver lining because I don't want to kind of, I don't want to gloss over the fact that this is a scary, challenging time. Yeah. However, it's going to force us to get creative. Right. And so maybe we really do start looking at how we articulate with the nervous system and start coming up with some other solutions. Mm -hmm. So I would say just try it and people will either like it or not. And then you'll yeah. have your answer. Yeah. If nothing else, like I feel like just trying it would um, improve my future in-person work. Because I yeah. feel like I'm, I'm often like not, I, I'm not that I, in my work, I don't often say much. Unless they're sure. trying to have a conversation, but I feel like there are times when it, like I should be like maybe guiding the breath or asking them to do things or like, and mm. sometimes I. You ever hear that old joke though, Nick? What? No, which, which one? Which is the best, the best talent a massage therapist can possess is the ability to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever heard that? Yeah, uh, maybe not quite phrased like that, but. Yeah, I know. I it's one of the number one complaints. It's one of the number one consumer complaints about massage therapists is that we maybe tend just, to talk too much. Maybe I understood that intuitively, but but is the complaint that the therapist is going like, "Oh, let me tell you about this day yeah. I had." It's that, exactly as opposed to like, exactly. "I need to take a deep breath." Right, right, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it was definitely a joke for sure. Yeah. Um, I think we've all probably, unfortunately, had a massage from somebody who was projecting a bunch of their own stuff verbally onto the session, and that's different than <laughs> guiding someone yeah. into breathing and experiencing the massage. Yeah. yeah. Um, did you want to share any practical ideas for yeah. LMTs, business owners, during this, like, down? Time? Yeah. Yeah, I was just talking to a lawyer friend of mine um, before we got on video chat for this. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> this information is changing really rapidly and there's different programs that are happening um, on state levels and national levels that are getting you know rolled out, it seems like every few days. Um, but I'm gonna look down at my notes. I made some notes. Um, Love notes. He was recommending that people who have businesses in our field go to benefits.gov website um, and apply for an economic injury disaster loan. Um, Portland and, and Oregon in particular had something similar, but well, they might have several, but one of them closed, one of the deadlines for that closed. This one is still open. Um, it's on a national level. Um, and I think the only requirement is that your business needed to be a functioning entity before January 31st of this year. Yeah. So I would encourage people to kind of reach out and check out some of those resources, mm -hmm. talk to other business owners, not just LMTs, other business owners as well, and see what they're applying for. This is a completely unprecedented time. We haven't seen anything like this in our lifetime. 
And so the government is responding with different programs. Yeah. So if you're feeling the pinch and you're really scared and worried about what's happening or, or not, or if you're just curious about it, um, check it out because there's some resources out there. And there, there are even options, even as sole proprietors in mm -hmm. the, like the big economic stimulus package. Yep, exactly. That are, that are worth looking at. I've even heard, and, and I'm, I'm not so sure about this, but I heard that um, even unemployment insurance has been expanded to consider independent contractors. I heard that as well. Yeah, which is a really, really good news for our field because a lot of us are independent contractors, even if we're working with a business or for a business. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's a good thing to, to keep an eye out for. Um, I guess I, I do want to say like, you know, we've talked a lot about the, this challenging time and obviously it's not gonna, gonna clear up tomorrow or even next week or the week after, but um, I do think it's worth noting that massage therapy is gonna be more important than ever yeah. when, when we get out of this. And I think you have a good perspective on that if you wanna share. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, you know, again, back to that industry report where only 20% of Americans that had a massage. Um, I think a lot of times we as massage therapists function as educators, whether you're a formal teacher or not, it doesn't matter. Um, you often find yourself in the role of educating the general public about the benefits of massage. Mm -hmm. We know for a fact that a one hour massage once every four to six weeks has been shown to increase a person, the strength of a person's immune system. I think those conversations are going to be happening more. Um, hopefully we see more insurance companies incentivizing it, more employers incentivizing it. Um, also, this is the first time ever I've heard people outside of our industry using the term touch deprivation. Mm. I've never heard people who aren't LMTs talking about touch deprivation and people are talking about it now. Yeah. Right. Like, I, this is a thing I'm experiencing. This is a brutal part of quarantine. I feel so deprived of human touch. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I feel very curious and hopeful yeah. um, about it, it, where we're going to fit into that. A lot of us didn't realize like how important that is to simply being human at all. Oh yeah. Yeah. Just that, that yeah. contact. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So I feel like maybe a lot of the challenge is just making it through this uncertain time. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't know how long it's going to last. We don't know what the scale of the fallout is going to be medically. Um, but at some point it's going to end. Right. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to have to look around us and decide where we want to lead. Right. Um, and how we want to be of service. Yeah. Yeah. I think about that a lot, actually. The, um, that's, that's maybe why I'm a little sometimes harder on myself about what I'm getting done during the downturn, because I, I want to be able to hit the ground. Mm -hmm. I want to be yeah. in a place where that's, you know, like the, the world opens back up and I'm like, Oh, I didn't do all these things. I could, you know, like, I don't want that. I don't have that feeling then. Right. So that's, that, I think that's why I can be a little harder on myself now. Yeah. But yeah, kind of day by day. Mm -hmm. I know I keep joking that the next time I ask the universe for a break, I need to be a lot more specific. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I anticipate I anticipate it's going to change the way my workflow goes. Yeah. In what way? Um that I will probably be so relieved to have a bunch of work to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that it'll feel good to lean into it for a good long while. I yeah. don't know though. Yeah. Yeah, we Yeah, I miss it. We tend to adapt and and forget as well. <laughs> like, <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Yeah, we get we all get back to work, and then like three months go by, and we're yeah, all, we're all back to our bad habits, you know, whatever. Yeah, but that's I don't know. This might be a little bit different. I mean, we're yeah. living through an actual historical event. Yeah, you know, with a long continuance. So yeah. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, yeah. Like you were saying at the beginning of this video, you know, it can take like 
a year or so. Um, and then the memory of the trauma will pop back up. Yeah. yeah. And we don't know if the virus itself will come back up. And oh, I know, right? That's part of it too. Can we just talk about that for a second? Like uh, the stress of not knowing. Yeah. That's, that's been a big one for me. Um, not having information or not fully understanding the virus um, has been really, really stressful for me. Uh, I'm from New York originally, so what's been going on there has been really tough. Um, I've got family there. And then I just read on ABC News this afternoon that tigers at the Bronx Zoo tested positive. Yeah, I don't know what to do with that. I don't either. Yeah. My, I guess my takeaway from that is don't watch the news. <laughs> I know. Okay, so let's talk about that for self-care. Uh, so, okay, so actually let's talk about this for a minute. So um, I have a couple of friends who are writers. Okay. And I've been looking around at everybody and checking in on how everybody's doing mentally and emotionally. And the writers seem to be doing pretty well. And I was talking to one of my writer friends the other day and he was like, yeah, because I work in isolation for years and years and years. And... The way I do that is by creating a schedule for myself. I build structure into my day. Yeah. And every day follows a structured path. And that was very helpful for me. Um, that's not something I knew how to do. A lot of my structure comes from external pressures, right? Like the kids' school schedule, my work schedule, like all of these things. Um, and so I really did start to internalize that. Like, okay, we're going to get up by this certain time. Everybody gets dressed except for Sundays. Um, and, and then just have like a loose structure um, so that it's not stressing us out. Um, but yeah, like creating new coping mechanisms and new ways of being um, seems to be called for right now. Yeah, for sure. I'm trying to think what my own are. Yeah, just part of that's adjusting to online learning for school and. Yep. Yeah. I find oh, and I got started on this because I was thinking about limiting the amount of news you're consuming. Oh, yeah. As, as a self-care tactic. <laughs> yeah. For sure. Especially opinion pieces for me. Yeah. Those have been tough. I just kind of want the facts as we have them. Yeah, I try to just go with uh, my NPR morning news update, which is about 10 minutes and then... Call it good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I figure if something super major changes, I'll see it in a social media feed. So that's true. Because I am still, yep. you know, scrolling through those as it were. Yeah. That's a double edged sword. Yeah. Connection. Lots Wait, of shame bombs. We're going to get on TikTok. A lot of positivity on TikTok. Is that, what, is that what the kids are doing these days? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All uh, right. Aging up. I mean, I'm on there. <laughs> <laughs> It just took a pandemic. Yeah. I always think about those things and I'm like, but I feel like by the time I show up, like that whole platform is dead. Like if I know about it, they're like, oh, it's over. <laughs> but you're on Instagram and Instagram's not over. That's true. That's yeah. true. Yeah. I mean, that's what we think. I should ask my 18 year old niece. She'll know. Oh yeah. She'll be like Instagram. She'll be, yeah, she's on TikTok. That's what yeah. Be. Yeah. She's on TikTok and Snapchat and everything else. And yeah. like, ugh, Instagram. Yeah. More more stuff to produce and release mm -hmm. yeah, that's the stuff I, str I struggle with yeah um, well thanks so much for talking today yeah I, um, I really appreciate it and I hope to check in with you um, again mm -hmm. this time um, and I guess this is being released as a podcast so if you're listening to this as a podcast okay. thanks for listening oh did you want to say something else I uh, know. Just right thanks in. for the conversation and the connection. Oh, yeah. um, anybody who's listening, thanks for listening. And um, if you have questions, you can find me on Instagram. Of course. Under, yeah, under Crystal Kalanka LMT. Yes. And you'll be tagged and linked in uh, however I release this. Well, cool. yeah. All right. Thanks. All right. Um, I'm going to, yeah. Oh, yeah. Thanks so much. I'm going to stop this recording, but we can talk for another minute. Okay. See what happens here.